Hi, Jason here, Morphixology Reptile. Just kidding, that's not my intro. That's Joel from State 40 Exotics, and we're doing a uh, favorite, top three favorite uh, snakes in the collection video on his recommendation. If you haven't seen his video, go check it out. I'll link it up here, and uh, here we go. But uh, it's not just me. I got somebody else here that's gonna do their favorite as well. Let's see if we can add her in the video. Mixology wife in the house. Hi, so guys. we're gonna do both of our favorites. And if that edit did not work at all, none of this made any sense because you didn't see it. So let's just go with that. Um, but yeah, we're each gonna do three of our favorite snakes in the collection. We're up to 49 now, I think. So uh, favorite has changed significantly over time, but we'll start with Julia's favorite. My favorite is our, one of my favorites is our original Kevin. And he's way down at the bottom. He's gotten so big since we first got him. He's just a normal banana, but he's one of my favorites. I think one of the things that makes him my favorite too, besides that he's our original, is I actually have from Jason a um, original necklace made of him that has some of his little signature spots on it that he's had from the beginning. So he's pretty cool. He's always been super, super tame. He's one of those ones now that if people come over and we have, they've never held a snake or anything like that, we always give him him. Obviously we don't really hand him the first one because he's bigger and for some reason size, I understand why, but size can kind of intimidate people right off the get go. So we'll normally bring out one of the, you know, smaller baby ones and they might just touch it and that's about it. But then once they get comfortable with the idea, then we can hand him Kevin and they actually enjoy holding him. And his dad is one of the ones that I got used to, you know, snakes with. I wanted that one. He wasn't available because he was part of their other collection. So we got his, his son and Kevin is super awesome. And he is named after one of the minions because Banana. minions like bananas. So yeah. He's, he's pretty awesome. He's definitely, definitely a mascot animal that we're going to have forever for sure, for sure. So. and uh, along that lines i'll actually go real quick and show you one of one of my favorites just because it's one that i, I when i first saw the the combination i knew i always wanted one and then i got the opportunity to get one early on this is stewart uh, obviously in the same vein as kevin when it comes to the minions name um Stuart's just a banana pied and uh, for those that don't know, the pied gene are recessive. So in this case, he has one copy of banana and two copies of the pied gene, which presents the white, uh, the white patterning in that. Um, he doesn't have nearly as many freckles, but they are coming in. They're much more reduced. And those that don't know, the black spots, a lot of people freak out thinking that they're mites in, uh, in pictures and that. They're not, they're, they're freckles, just like we have. Uh, they're very common in the banana gene. And there's a, there's a few genes that will take them, the freckles away um, and super banana, when you have two copies of the banana, don't get freckles at all. He's but, super sweet. Yeah, he's really, really excellent handling as well. So He's definitely another one that we'll take out for people first timers. So Kind of a wow factor animal, you know, people are always afraid of snakes because the, the colors and that. Um, I found, and I was the same way, that the farther away from the way they appear in the wild, generally are easier to handle and get used to to begin with, with people that are afraid of snakes. And obviously this is about as far away as you can get, so. Next one for you. Me? Um, we'll go with BB. She's so pretty. Um, she's one of our newer ones here, but she's a pretty integral part of our um, dreamsicle project. Of course, we want to make some dreamsicles. So, BB is a glass <laughs> um, spider. Um, Lavender spider, possible head for pie. Yeah. Clearly I remember all of the jeans really well. I just like the fact that they kind of look pretty. And then Jason oftentimes tells me, no, nah, we don't really need that in our collection. And I'm like, but it looks pretty. The, uh, the spider reduces the pattern significantly and takes away a lot of the white that acts as the contrast for mm -hmm. the color. Um, she's going into shed, so even the B-roll is probably not as clean, but uh, she's getting the really bright orange sides and kind of a, almost a pink outline hue mm -hmm. around her belly in that. Possible head for pied, 66%, uh, which just means that the pairing that produced her was 100% hot uh, pied to 100% pied, or excuse me, 100% head pied to 100% head pied. And uh, the offspring on average 
Um, every, every snake has a two-thirds chance in that case of also being 100% head pied. In that case, if we do end up producing a dream sickle, which would be the lavender pied with her, and it carried the spider gene, spider pieds typically are just the head pattern and occasionally just the tail pattern as well, but most often just the head pattern. So she would have the dream sickle, kind of orangish pink, yellowish head and a solid white body. You do also have the a possibility with spiders to produce what's a, called a white wedding, which is a 100% solid white pied snake with no color pattern. And the only way we would know in that case that we had a uh, white wedding dream sickle is she would have the red eyes from the lavender albino. Otherwise, she would just be a spider pied that was head for lavender, so. And maybe a little background story on her name of kind of why I named her Phoebe. I am absolutely obsessed with this show Friends. I have been since high school, which was a while ago now. Um, but Phoebe is super blonde and she's a little ditzy, which spiders are known for, a um, little derpy. So it, she definitely fits her name quite well, but she doesn't really have any spider derpiness really that shows in her. She's been pretty good, but her name so, fits her for sure. So along that line, my one of my other favorites, my but I guess second favorite, they're in no particular order. This girl's also going into shed, of course. It never fails when you go to do a video. But this is, this is Betty. Betty is obviously a visual pied and she is 66% possible head for lavender. So more or less exactly the opposite of what Phoebe is. Phoebe had the visual lav and the possible head for pied Betty has the visual pied and possible head for lab. This one came from KMS Constrictors. Um, super nice people and she she eats everything I put in front of her and she, she's growing well. She's 1500 grams now. There's a very good possibility that I'll be able to breed her and she'll go this year, probably late uh, this season. I'd say I'd probably be able to start working her February, March, something like that. So towards the end of the year, we, we might be able to get eggs from her. And again, we'd go to the pastel uh, head dreamsicle and hopefully prove that out. Named Betty, obviously, for Betty Crocker, for pies. I named 99% <laughs> of our snakes. Um, so I, I kind of theme them a lot, but she's definitely named for Betty Crocker and her pie. And on her, one of my favorite little spots is just her black spot in the very back. She's total pie, but has this random, like, little um, pea-sized black spot on her. It's pretty cute. You got one more? Yep, one more. It's, he's not a ball python, but he is still one of my favorites, so I will take him out and show him. Even though I don't know from that angle if you'll actually be able to see much of him or not, because he is quite tiny. And in his in his tub, we use the same tubs for everybody. His tub we have a lid on because uh, he's an escape artist. Mm -hmm. So this is Olaf, and he's, he's itty bitty, but he is a snow western hognose. And I named him Olaf because he's a snow. Um, if you didn't get that, that's a Frozen reference. Um, but he's so stinking cute. Um, I love little hog noses, how their nose just kind of um, pigs out at the very end of it. When we got him, he's from Danny D. Uh, yeah. Um, when we got him, he, we were told that he's quite an aggressive eater. Um, he'll just snatch up thing, anything you put in there. And I, once we got him, I don't know what it is, but it's been farthest from the truth. He hasn't, um, you pretty much have to feed him his food from the tongs, like a little bird or something like that. Otherwise he won't really eat it, but he is so stinking cute. The, uh, the snow moniker is a combination. It's a double recessive in this case. It's a xanthic, which removes the, um, red pigment and it's, uh, albino, which removes the black pigment and you end up with pink by doing that. He's kind of goofy. Apparently western hog noses are characteristic for kind of doing this puff up little thing too to make themselves appear bigger than they are. And it, it's quite funny to watch these little guys. They've got a ton of personality yeah. when it comes to snakes. They really do. Anyway, so Just, those are my top three. Speaking of personality. He's kind of hooked no, himself right now. <laughs> nobody that's watched many videos of this channel will, will be confused who this is but easily one of my favorite snakes that, I've, that we have here. Not ball python either. Is not a ball python at all, is of course Jameson. Um, named, af named after my favorite whiskey, even though he's nowhere close to remotely Irish by any stretch. <laughs> um, but Jameson is, he's just fantastic and he's gotten much bigger from the time we got him uh, back, I think in March? Mm, something right. like that. Uh, and he's, uh, so Jameson is a, 
a call albino, which in boas there's multiple different strains of albino, kind of like albino, lavender albino, stuff like uh, caramel albino and ball pythons. Different strains of albino in this case, and they're not compatible. So he's a call strain albino. Um, he's possible hit for anery, anerthristic, which in this case would cause a, a snow, is, is, what, uh, is what that would be called in boas, if I, believe, if I remember correctly. And then he has um, motley, which is a pattern gene. It's kind of hard to see in the albino, um, but it's basically, it, makes, it takes the, the bow tie looking patterns and kind of blocks it, so it's almost like little cubes. And then he's possibly jungle, which when you put the albino and the uh, motley together, it's nearly impossible to see it. Although the people that I've talked to that are really good with boas say they think he is in fact jungle. Um, it's gonna be hard to prove out because even if, because if we breed him, we're gonna breed him to a moon glow, which is a call albino visual anatheristic and hypo. So pretty. Um, they're really pretty. They're, they're almost like a silvery white color with a purple tail, purple tail pattern. So we'll, if that's the pairing, we'll get all albinos, if nothing else. And so we're gonna have the same problem trying to, di to uh, see the jungle in him. But really excited to have him. I like, we're starting to get into a little bit of the larger species animals, especially for ambassador snakes that we can show at kids and schools and you know pet shows and stuff like that. Um, Which for me is very odd because I, I still am like, I like the, I love the snakes, but it still takes a little bit for me to just, oh, you know, reach my hand in and grab one. Usually I'll be like, oh, you know, come, can you get that one out and, and whatnot. But um, it, it's going to be interesting when these little ones grow up to be, you know, six feet or, or greater and I, I have to get in there and get them. But yeah, it'll just of, take some time for me. Well, and that's part of the reason we bought all of these uh, relatively small. Like, like you said, should, uh, Jameson here will probably get about six foot and you know probably seven inches in diameter six seven inches in diameter you know and good heavy bodied in that that's why we work with them so much as you can see everything we've pulled out has been real calm we only have maybe two or three that are kind of sketchy um one of my favorite ones i didn't yeah. even want to bring on the camera because there's no way in hell i'd hold her she's <laughs> she's really really tough defensive none of them are mean they're not that's the, they're not aggressive there's no such thing um they're just defensive or hungry or both but obviously these big ones we want to keep real tame, we want to be able to handle them, we want, so if the kids grab their heads it doesn't, it doesn't startle them in that. Because when they're big large body constrictors that could actually hurt them, we got to make sure that they're safe. Uh, so we're really excited about this. The female, once we get her, we don't have her yet, uh, once we get her she'll grow to be about 8 feet or more. Um, and we've actually got a couple other larger body snakes now too. We, we have the Dumeril's boa, which is a, an honorable mention of mine. Um, he's been kind of cantankerous the last week or so, so that's why I didn't take him out. I'm just trying to let him relax, give him some time off. Uh, but he'll get about about five or six foot as well, and the female about eight again. And then we picked up a coastal carpet python female that we're going to be picking up a male for eventually, and she'll get north of eight feet or longer, uh, but She's not pretty cool. but not nearly as big a body, kind of like a lar like a really big colubrid. Uh, but really, it's kind of fun. You know, we started with the ball pythons; that's what we're breeding, and now we're down to collecting a bunch of other fun stuff. Well, so. and now you want something else too that's not a ball python either, so. Yeah, there's always something. Um, I really. It's like tools. You can just never have them any, have enough, apparently. I really want a super dwarf retic from Garrett, or from uh, Garrett Hartle up there, Reach Out Reptiles, but unfortunately the the large body constrictors, even though you can get super dwarfs that are smaller than most boas, um, they're not allowed in Montana at all, so that's gonna have to wait. But. That's going to do it for our favorites, top three in the collection so far. Thanks to Joel, State 48 Exotics. Like I said, if you haven't seen him, description will be in, or uh, his information will be in our description. And uh, the link to that video, super nice dude. Um, I thought this was kind of fun. And now we get to challenge you guys to move it forward. If you have your favorite three animals in your collection, make a video about it, post it up, tag us, Morph Mixology, and State 48 Exotics in it. And let's just share, you know, share the love, see what everybody's got in their collection and what they really enjoy. Like and subscribe as always. Merch link down below. New stuff coming, new logo design coming like I've talked before. And I'll see you guys, I guess we will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.